Cause we don't want your broken parts You can put your mind and do whatever you want to do Just tell yourself that you're capable too But don't do things that ain't even cool And get rid of them no good friends that's enabling you Making you feel like you won't be nothing Your life crumbling, they talk mumbling You gon' be something You are glorious We're no gangs but warriors We well known notorious They can't stop you or block you or mock you They mad cause you bad and they not you You fall down but get up and skip and hop through Kick down doors for others to walk through You have a purpose To make you say, did I do that? Urkel Now we calling reality virtual this is who I am, this is me. Don't let them words hurt you. When the sharpest words wanna cut me down, I'm gonna send a flag, gonna drown them out. I am brave, I am bruised, I am who I'm meant to be. This is me. Look out, cause here I come. And I'm marching on to the beat I drum. I'm not scared to be seen. I make no apologies. This is me. Jeez, yeah, this is me. there and welcome. I'm just sitting here passing time. Time's an interesting subject, isn't it? I haven't got time. It's about time. It's your time. Listen, we all get exactly the same amount of time. Exactly. Now here's something interesting. The sand in the bottom of the glass represents the past. The sand in the top of the glass re represents the future. This is the way it actually is. You have no idea what's in the top of the glass. You only know what's in the bottom of the glass. Isn't that interesting? And you see, 
The only thing we've got anything to do with is what's right here in the center right now. Everything else is an illusion. It's a myth that's gone. To most people, Bob Proctor was this master teacher, this powerful, impactful speaker and leader of the personal development industry. There is no doubt that he has been the one to really waken people up. And I think the reason is because when Bob speaks, he speaks the truth about you. He spoke the truth about me. And that's why I'm so grateful to be Bob Proctor's number one global consultant at an executive diamond level. Because whilst that's just a title, whilst Bob is just a name, the power is in the spirit. The power is in every one of us. See, I think we live simultaneously on three planes of understanding. We're okay. spiritual creatures, we have an intellect, and we live in physical bodies. But because we lack awareness or understanding of who we are, we're totally locked into a physical world, and we let things outside of us control us. 95% of the population are reacting to life. They're not really living at all. It's not what you're doing, it's how you do it. Kim is the best. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Do you know, for over 50 years now, I have worked all over the world helping people with personal development, helping them become the, the person they really want to be. Kim Calvert is, without question, one of the most effective people that I have ever worked with. If you want to multiply your income, if you want to multiply your effectiveness, if you just want to have more friends, have more fun, live a more full life, and don't be stuck ever, you've got to sit down and talk to this woman. Somewhere along the line, you made a decision exactly the same I did, that you were really going to gain an understanding of this information. When I sat down many years ago with Earl Nightingale in Chicago, I made up my mind I was going to learn what he was doing, and I was going to keep getting better at it all my life, and I've done that. You've obviously done a similar thing. Absolutely, I have. So I'm grateful for every moment, for every blessing, for every lesson, and for every hug but I don't see this as the end. I see this as the beginning. And I am willing, I am ready, and I am committed to living on this legacy in whatever shape and form that that evolves into. Because I know that Bob is still here. Spirit is 100% evenly present at all times and in all places. And for that, I am grateful. She can teach you the science of success. And if you're dealing with this woman right here, you've got one of the best consultants in our company. Everything that has happened right up to this moment in your life has been absolutely essential to make you the person you are to prepare you to do whatever it is you're going to do. All right. Hello. Welcome, everybody. We are here. This is the Bob Proctor Tribute. Very special five-day event. My name is Kim Calvert, and oh, am I grateful to be here with each and every one of you. I'm watching the comments coming in. There are so many of you here, and I just want to first take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for prioritizing you because these next five days, we are going to give Bob Proctor a tribute in the absolute way that he would want the most. And that is wakening people up, helping you realize actually why you're here. Now, there's going to be so many people. In fact, we have over 5,000 people registered for this event. I'm seeing all the comments come in. Please do continue to share your thoughts with us. Let us know what country you're coming from. I believe we're streaming into over 78 different countries, which I am so 
proud and so honored and so unbelievably grateful. This is a week that is definitely true to my heart. Uh, as many of you know, uh, myself and Bob Proctor had a very unique and very special friendship and bond. Not only was he my mentor, but I certainly seen him. I always couldn't tell. Do I see him as a father figure or a grandfather? But I think he probably preferred father. And uh, me and Bob had such a wonderful relationship. And really, I suppose the purpose of why you're here, you may not know yet. OK, but you're going to know by the end of these five days why you have been called to turn up to this, why you made the decision to just click and find out more, why maybe somebody shared this with you and said, you got to check this out. I can't even really explain why, but just come and watch. Uh, because I can certainly say every single person that is here are here for a reason. And uh, across these five days, I have really spent a long time thinking about what is the best way that I can help you with where you're at. And you may not even feel that you want help, need help, but I can guarantee you I had all those thoughts too. Now, across, to give you a bit of an overview of what this week is going to be like, there are five days, okay? Firstly, tell me in the chat box, what are you thinking about our incredible tribute portal? Isn't this incredible? This is what we do at Dynamite Lifestyle. We're always wanting to improve our service to others, make it easier for you uh, to really get a hold of this information in an organized fashion so that you can apply it, so that you can stay focused, and so that uh, you're really locked into your desire, your goal, and moving forward. Now, as I say, some of you might have been invited and you may not know why you're here, but I believe everybody's here for a reason. I know I stumbled across this information a uh, long time ago. It's actually seven years now I've been kind of studying in this field of personal development. And uh, across the five days, I'm going to be telling you stories. We're going to make this really relatable, easy to understand, because I believe it doesn't have to be complicated. In fact, Einstein always said, if things are complicated, and you don't keep it simple, you just simply don't understand it. So I'm not going to come on here like I maybe do like any other workshops. This is not a normal workshop. This is not where I'm going to be coming in and really getting into the it's itty gritty of the science. But I'm going to talk straight to you today. I'm going to do what Bob Proctor did to me, which was talk to the essence and the truth that lived inside me. And I'm going to do that through stories. Now, we've got five days. Today is all about the self-shift. Tomorrow is all about the mind. The next day is about the results. The next day is about the money. Okay? That topic that nobody wants to talk about, and yet we all absolutely must think about that. And then we're going to end it on Friday with faith. And these, to me, are the five biggest shifts that completely changed my life. And I thought... What better way to honor the greatest teacher that was ever known, the number one prosperity teacher, the master thinker, Bob Proctor, the best way that I believe in my heart to honor him is by sharing what I have learned from him, working beside him for six years, you know, constant communication, going to his home, flying in his private jets, being by his side while he's teaching. I am so grateful I got to experience that. I got to experience crying to Bob, laughing with Bob, um, breaking down and going, oh, I'm stuck to Bob. By the way, never do that. <laughs> Last time I remember talking to Bob, one of the times was when I was talking and I was letting my paradigm talk. And he said, I'm not talking to your paradigm. And I learned so much from Bob, not from the videos, not from the textbooks, not even from the books that he was reading from. That was all absolutely vital to the growth of my own personal development. But I learned from Bob by being with Bob, by feeling his energy, by watching how he demonstrated his positive mental attitude out into the world, how he, you know, left the impression of increase with other people. How he always, no matter when he spoke to you, he made you feel like the most important person. Now, I'm going to share, as I said, this is going to be a very 
uh, intimate session over the next five days. I'm actually going to share some things that I've never shared before. I'm going to completely go with storytelling this week. And I want you to understand from the outset, I am not here to go, look at me. I'm amazing. Brilliant. Okay. Now, I do think I'm amazing because Bob taught me how to figure that out. But I'm here to tell you stories, as Bob would always say, not to impress you, but to impress upon you that if I can do it, you can do it. And if you've showed up today, it tells me you're looking for something. And that's really how this story begins. Now, you'll also notice that I have placed each day uh, in different orders. Most people are like, Kim, just tell us about the results. How did you manifest? How did you do all of this? You want to get into the, how do we get? And the biggest thing I want to leave with you this week, it is not about getting things. It is not about having. Honestly, the real truth is it's about realizing who you are, falling in love with that, and then going out and expressing it in the world through your goals, through your actions, through your business, through your relationships. That's what really living is all about. And that's what I'm so grateful that Bob taught me. Now, I'm going to start from the beginning. And that's why I'm not jumping to results. Results is day three. Every single day as we go through this, I'm going to basically peel back the curtain, peel back all the layers and show you how I went from being totally broke, totally stuck, having £4.20 in my pocket to now running multiple companies serving millions of people and running a business at eight figures. Now, I'm also going to tell you from the outset, I have done no other uh, study apart from what I learned from Bob. I have been in business now for seven years and I've taken it to eight figures and we're going to take it further. And again, I don't say that to make you go, oh, who does she think she is? I want you to realize I'm actually a very ordinary person. I get extraordinary results because I got a mentor, because I got guidance, okay? So as we go through this, this is why it's important you show up every single session. Now, you will know we've got different things going on inside your portal all day, every day across these five days. Again, why am I doing that? There's a reason for everything. Everything you see has been designed specifically by the laws of success. Why are we not sitting in a, you know, a different platform right now? We're not in a Facebook group because we've created something new. We're creating a new model that makes the old model obsolete. We're using what we've taught to really help you digest information that most people never hear about into five little segments that are just going to make you go, oh, and if that's all that I can get you to do this week, then I'm happy with that. You know, I always say my purpose and mission in life is to waken people up one thought at a time. Well, that will start with you today, but you've got to show up. You've got to be willing. You've got to have an open mind. Maybe some of you are skeptical. Maybe this is the first time you've come across this material. Awesome. I'm not going to try and force you to believe what I believe. But what I would ask you to do is just be open to it. Be open to the possibilities that actually, yeah, there might be more. Just ask yourself this one thing. When you really feel inside, when you really just be quiet, not listen to maybe others or not look at outside things, are there moments in your day when you just feel that there's more? There's a feeling. Now, sometimes that feeling can feel not so good. Sometimes that feeling can make you feel like you're stressed, you're under pressure. And this feeling is really why we've put the self shift as the first day, because as I share these lessons, you're going to see there's a specific order, a specific order to creating a life by order. If you want to create an incredible life where you've got health, wealth, relationships, you love getting up every day, you've energy, then you got to realize that you can create that. I didn't know that once upon a time, no idea about that, but you can create it and there's a process to it. So I'm going to take you through the process. So it's important you show up every day. In the evenings, you will see then we have Bob coming in 
and we've got old skill Bob, my favorites, where Bob is teaching you his Born Rich series. That's going to happen at eight o'clock uh, evening. And then in between that, during the day, we have our client success stories. This is where my clients who are part of our community that have learned this entire step-by-step -step process, who've proved in results, are then going to come in and share with you as well, because I'm just one person. And you may think, oh, well, I don't know, maybe Kim was just a one-off. I've heard that before. No, Kim was not a one-off. Kim's only a one-off in the fact that there's only one Kim and there's only one you. And when I started to realize that, I, I used to try to blend in, be like everybody else. That was hard work. Maybe you try to blend in. That's not easy because you feel different. And sometimes we don't feel that feeling different is okay. And that's really where we start today. Where was I before Bob Proctor? The self-shift. Why is this probably the most important lesson? Well, it's very simple. If I can take you back in time, again, I'm going to tell stories of how I got here. So for anyone that doesn't know me, I'm a high-performance mentor. Sometimes people go, what does that mean? It's very simple. I help people shift their thinking so that they can just go out and actually take the actions and the behaviors that they want, they get the reaction and we start to get better results in life. If you have a dream, I can help you achieve it. If you feel that you're stuck in your own way, I can help you close the gap. If you feel like you know what to do, but you just for some reason can't do it, you keep falling into the same self-sabotaging behaviors, that's what I do. I help people be the best of them bring the best of them to the surface. And that was really the first time I heard about mentorship. Now, as I say, I'm going to take you back in time, okay? I am 35, believe it or not. But when I was 28, this is going back, you know, six, seven years now, I'm sitting as a nurse. So that's what I did, okay? And even before that, if we go back to young kind of Kim, I grew up in a very wonderful, loving, beautiful home with wonderful parents. I don't have any, you know, past story that was, you know, traumatic. I don't have that, but I have my story. And I hope that in sharing my story and being vulnerable and being um, integral and being transparent and coming from a place of love, which are the core elements of my business, I'm, I'm hoping that it's going to resonate with you with where you're at. And that's the whole point of these stories. What are your intentions coming in here this week? Yes, I'm going to share what I did, but really the reason I'm going to share with you is because then you can apply what I've done. You can go away and start to think and, and look through a different lens. So before even nursing, there I was growing up in a wonderful home. I'm actually from a very, very, very small little tiny island called the Northern Ireland. OK, and I am from another little tiny, tiny little town called Lurgan. And I always joke and say not much happens in Lurgan, but you'd be surprised. And I grew up in a wonderful home, loving parents. And um, I was always brought up to kind of learn probably the same things as you work hard. OK, work hard if you want to earn money. My, both my parents worked really hard. So even as a young child growing up, I seen working hard equals X. OK, then I was also told and I really didn't like this one. Kim, you got to be really smart if you're going to do well in life. Now, I don't know if I heard that directly from my parents, but I definitely heard that somewhere. I, I picked it up somewhere along my path because here's the thing. See, all those beliefs that we have, you weren't born with them. You never popped out of the womb and went, OK, I'm afraid of not being confident enough. Oh, money, there's not enough of it. Like we didn't think like that when we were born. But when I then started growing up in this home, being told these things, watching that you work hard to earn money, being told you have to be smart, I had a big problem with that. Do you know why? Because I didn't feel I was very smart. I'm dyslexic, I'm rubbish at math still. And I had all the, like, I was the one that had to go and, and, you know, work after school with a teacher and work on my spellings and get all those little special extra classes. I really didn't enjoy school. I was a person, let me get my hands into it, let me play. 
And that's always been my kind of character. So as you can imagine, going up through school, it was like, oh, I live for sports day and kind of after school. And that led on into university time. I didn't want to go to university. The only reason I honestly went to university was to move away from home. And that was the truth. And I was also brought up in a very loving Christian family home. Now, I'm not going to bring up religion in any of these sessions, but I think it's important to give you this backstory as to where I was actually able to create my belief. Okay. And my belief really came from always being told, you know, everything's, you know, happening for you and you're going to be looked after and there's a God. And I didn't really understand that, but that's how I was brought up. Okay. Now, when I got to university, I did whatever I did to not have to be in university. I wanted to be out in the wards. I started to be a nurse because I kind of had a feeling, I think I'm good at helping people. Like, I didn't know what I wanted to do in my future. So many people right now, especially young people, they don't know what they want to do. And for me, it was certainly a bit of a tick box, right? So I went and I did nursing. I, you know, was told, Kim, you'll probably never get past a, a band five, which is like your entry level. And you've got to really just, you know, you'll probably just stay there. Well, I got in and I loved helping people. I love working with people and I actually done really well in nursing and I went right up to a band seven but then it got to a point I was 28 so this is now seven years ago I got to a point in my life where I was in a job I was getting paid 35,000 a year I, I had a house I owned a car kind of all the normal things that's where I was at except there was an emptiness now, I don't know if any of you can relate to this, but I'm going to be honest. I felt like I was getting up every day doing the same thing in and out, and I wasn't really feeling fulfilled. Now, my job was so fulfilling in the sense of I was working actually in psychiatry, mental health with young people, which I love doing. And that's where it caused a conflict. I actually loved working with young people, but I also had an absolute sense in me that there's got to be more. Now, it came to a point where I'm sitting in my office because I had a beautiful office. I was working at a band seven level. Like I had made it as I felt in that life. But it kind of got to the point where I'd reached the top. I wasn't going to be able to earn any more money. I was working a lot of hours, as I'm sure you know. And I was kind of just living for the weekend, for the one holiday a year, and there was something missing. And I felt really guilty about it. Here I am in a good government job with a pension. I got a house, I got a car. Just be grateful for what you have. Who are you to think that you, one, can have more, or that two, that you even deserve it? Now, the part that people seen when I went into my nursing, when I went out with my friends, they seen a very different side to Kim. They seen just, you know, I was getting all my people. I was doing the things, but I was actually very, very broken inside. I was also in a negative, toxic relationship. And it just appeared to me one day as I sat in my office and I looked out the window I remember watching there was birds flying in the, in the trees. I hadn't met Bob Proctor at this point, And I'm just sitting going, there's got to be more. There has to be more. And I was watching just seeing things every day. My friends were content with life. By all measures, I was doing good. But something was missing. And it scared me and it excited me at the same time. Now, way back then, as I say, I was in a relationship that wasn't great. And that I kind of figured out why that happened. My number one belief about me, and this is why this is day one, the self shift. I had no idea who I was. All I knew when I thought about me, when I dared to be quiet and listen to my own negative tape that was going on, it was saying, 
you're not good enough. In fact, my number one absolute core belief was that I was unlovable. I had this deep feeling from I was very tiny that I was unlovable. And I knew I was different. And I didn't think different was good. In fact, I was taught different isn't good. You want to blend in with everybody. You want to do it this particular way. But that didn't fit with how I really felt on the inside. And I didn't even understand what was going on in the inside. So I was really confused in my mind, which led to chaos in my life. And I'm in a relationship that wasn't serving me. And it, it started to kind of make sense. I was attracting people into my life that I was in harmony with. And what that means is I didn't love me. So of course I attracted people into my life that didn't love me, that didn't treat me right. But the lovely thing is there was a time when I used to blame, when I used to think that's their fault. That's because that's happening. And today in this self shift, I'm going to really teach you the three things that help me unlock the true self. The first one is awareness. The second one is responsibility. And the third one is I've got to decide, well, if I know who I am, where am I going? Now, this was all prior to meeting Bob. I'm sitting, I'm broke. And, and, and it's so hard even sometimes now to tell the story because it's so far away from where I am. But I remember the feeling in my stomach, in my gut. And sometimes it would move into my chest. And there was even one time where I lost my voice for nearly eight months because I was inside. I was hurting. I was in a dark place. I was lost mentally, physically, and definitely financially. My relationships were not doing well. My health wasn't particularly doing well. And my bank account was definitely not doing well. But something didn't add up. Because I was told, Kim, if you get an education, if you get the government job, the pension, if you work hard, you will have all of these wonderful things. And there I was in that position. And it was that day when I looked out my window and I went, hold on. This is not making sense. I did what everyone told me to do. I have, I, I, I'm not living a life I want. And that was the first day I think I really took it seriously to investigate personal development. Now, as most of you have maybe done, first thing I did, Google. But next thing I did, YouTube. Uh, third thing, Amazon, buy all the books, right? Have you done it? Let me know in the chat box if you've done that. You've done the shelf help, all right? I started to literally consume every clip that I could find on YouTube. Because back then, I also was in a, an athlete. I was a, into fitness and I was competing. And the reason that I went into that world was because I really didn't like me. Now, when I say I really didn't like me, guys, I mean, I really, I hated myself. I punished myself in many ways. And I got punished because I, I was not liking me. So that's what I was putting out. So of course, I was attracting. Things were going wrong in friendships, in relationships with my parents, with money, everything in life, just one thing after another. Have you ever experienced that? That's what was happening. So I thought, ah, I know the answer. I don't feel good enough. I'm not lovable. I'm going to go and get a six pack. I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to get my body into the best shape possible. And that'll be it. That's the answer. I will look good. So people will think I'm good. And, and my partner will, will like me and want me and all of those things that all go through our head. And I don't believe that I'm the only person that's ever felt this. So I did it. I made a decision. I went down that rabbit hole. And you know what? I wouldn't take any of it back. It was one of the best experiences of my life. And I ended up winning. I ended up with an eight pack. I ended up standing on stage, the crowd going crazy. And I'm standing there going, where's the stamp of validation? I don't feel it. 
I feel the same inside. And then it made sense. I changed the outside. I didn't change the inside. I don't even know how to get to the inside. Like what's even in the inside? What does the inside mean? So I started to watch more YouTube. And then one day, this older gentleman, shall we say, with white hair, came onto the screen and he started talking about the science of the mind. Now, I'd never come across this, ever. Now, I'm going to guess a lot of you guys follow Bob Proctor. You know Bob Proctor. You probably remember the first time you heard it, and it's like, you're waking up. Well, I remember watching these videos. In fact, the very first video I seen, I burst out crying in my car. I was sitting outside a healthcare center. I was about to go in and see a patient. And I watched this video, and all I could say was, he's talking to me. I didn't even understand what he was saying. Frequencies, vibrations, higher mental faculties. I had no clue what any of that meant, but something, it was like, oh, it just pulled me. And that's the greatest thing about Bob Proctor. He never seen himself actually as a teacher. He just cared about helping you figure out who you are and then go and do that. It's not about the things. It's not about what you achieve. It's not even about the money. The money, the things are all byproducts of happiness. And we're all so eager to get the things because we think we're going to be happy in the having of them. And what we got to realize is we just got to be happy to have them. But I didn't know that. And I'm sitting listening to this and I'm going, this resonates. And it felt like somebody was pulling my, like for the first time in my life, I felt like I was understood. That's the best way I can des describe it. You know, it, it fills me with emotion even thinking about it. Because I, I literally feel it was the first day I started to waken up. I was 28. I'm earning 35,000 a year. I've hit the peak in my career. My relationships are failing. My health is not great. My money is deplorable. This can't be it. And it wasn't. So. It came to the day where I watched all the videos, him not being the brightest in the box, never thought to like contact and see, could you learn this stuff? I'm just trying to take down every YouTube video, trying to work it all out. And then one day I find myself in a pet shop because whilst I'm studying this stuff, my results hadn't changed. Now, if you're on here today and you're thinking, oh, I resonate with that, I can recite all of this stuff. You've maybe been to every group, every uh, event. You've maybe listened to Bob for longer than I have. But at the end of the day, results leave close. My results weren't changing and I was eating this material. But I was studying to get information. I didn't realize that there's a difference between getting all the information and then internalizing the information. That was new information to me. And when I heard, oh, you got to study, I was like, oh, no, I don't like study. Mm -mm, not good at the skill stuff. Oh, this is so different because you're studying you. So I found myself one day, this was, the, this was the moment. I often get asked in seminars or interviews, Kim, when was that moment? Well, I'll tell you, it was in a pet shop on the Boucher Road here in Belfast, Northern Ireland. And I'm standing there and I can't afford dog food. In fact, the, the toxic relationship that I was in, thankfully, I woke up and realized that's that's not for me. I got hurt. And if you've ever been heartbroken, that is not fun. But I just met someone new. And this took a long time for me to get to this point because I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't think I was lovable. And I'm standing with this person in a pet shop. This is how great my dates are. And... Uh, I'm looking at the dog food and I have my hand in my pocket. I'm squeezing coins. And it was that moment I realized this new person I'd met, which is Lindsay. I hadn't the guts to tell her we got to put like she literally had it in her hand, this fancy dog food. I have two little dogs, Roxy and Rex. They're the epitome of everything that we've done. I didn't want to tell her, let's let's get the cheap dog food. <laughs> put the good one back. You see, I was that broke that 
even when it come down to dog food, I was picking all the cheap options. And I wondered why I was getting cheap results. So I'm standing there squeezing these coins and my heart was breaking because I realized I have four pound 20 to my name and I'm embarrassed and I'm really disappointed in myself and I'm confused because I don't understand. I've got a really good job. How does this happen? And what was happening to me, and it might be happening to you, was I was getting job increases, okay? I was going up the bar. I was working 40 plus hours, usually a bit more, doing a little bit extra. I got extra jobs, but I was not earning any more money. At the end of every single month, I was broke. Now, can anybody resonate with this? Pop it in the chat. If you can resonate that when you're, you know, you do extra hours, you get the good job. If something happens at the end of the month, you can't end up where you've always been. And this was happening and I was so sick of it happening. So that day in that pet shop was the defining moment. I remember pulling my hand out, looking at the coins that imprinted on my hands. And I, I can feel where I was standing right there. And I went, no. And the words I said in my mind was, I will never be broke again. No, I'm not having this. I was done with it. And that was the day I made the decision. And that was the day I just made the decision. I need a mentor because I can't do this by myself. I tried. I got all the YouTube. I read books. I was trying to put this all together, but you can't go anywhere that you've never been without understanding that there's a process. And why would you even want to try to do it on your own when there's somebody like Bob Proctor who dedicated his life, who studied this for 60 plus years and had fine tuned it? Why would I not want to take that process? Skip the rungs of the ladder. I was, I suppose, I had a nice balance. I didn't have an ego problem. I don't feel I have an ego problem. Ego is when it's all about you and you can't be seen to be asking for help. No, if I'm stuck in, like when I'm driving and I'm stuck, I ask for help. If I go into a shop and I can't find what I'm asking for and somebody comes over and goes, can I help you? I say, yes. Do you know how conditioned we are to go? No, no, I can sort it out myself. I know where I'm going. We all have a, a co-pilot or driver like that. Or maybe you go into shops and people ask, can they help you? And you just are like, no. When you know fine rightly, you do need help. You see, there's a teaching in that, in that you got to be open to receive the good. Back then when I started, I was not open to receive the good. If somebody had have given me a compliment, I would have literally gripped my teeth. My stomach would have turned. And in my mind, I'd be saying, you're lying to me. I mean, I got angry. If somebody had said, Kim, you're looking good today. No, I'm not. Why are they lying to me? <clears throat> and whilst I might have been standing there going, mm -hmm, inside it was turning because I was like, no, that's not me. I am this awful person. I am unlovable. I am unworthy. That was the dominating tape that was going on in my mind and it was driving me crazy. So that decision had to be made. And I made that decision. And actually, when I was looking through my gratitude, I keep all my gratitudes from the very day and hour I've started. All of these books have everything that I have now in physical form written first, because thought is the preamble. We think and then we receive the things. So I find this <clears throat> just today. And it was actually the very little note I wrote to myself in July 2016. And I'm just going to read it for you. This is the, the weekend I made the decision. Okay. Today I'm grateful for, Bob always said, be grateful. Three things, having made my decision. Number two, lightness in heart. Number three, Lindsay's love for me. Now, why I'm sharing this personal information with you is because I'm going to do everything in my part for the rest of my life to waken people up just like Bob did. 
I am dedicating my life. I am not, I am, I'm an open book. I'm so transparent. I merely see through. And if I can help you unlock these thoughts about yourself, then I'm okay with sharing this with you. Now, let me explain this. Having made my decision, and then I said, I'm lightness in heart and I feel full of love. You see, what I learned from Bob, one of the greatest lessons was when you make a decision, everything changes. But you got to make a committed decision, not just be interested. Now, so many of you maybe have made a, got ideas. You want to do this, you want to do that, but have you actually committed to it? When you commit, you move on to a different operating. You think differently, right? It's kind of like think about when you've decided you're going to go on holidays, right? You've decided. Okay, what do you do next? You start getting the bikinis ready. You start getting the sun cream. You start packing the kids. You start taking action because you've already made the decision. Now, this is what happens when you open yourself up. So I was now open. I had lightness of heart. I asked my clients, because I mentor now thousands of people uh, through this material. We've got many different you know, options or different levels. But I asked my clients last week, what is one word that you feel this stuff has helped you with? Calmness of mind came up, fulfillment, inner peace, contentment. Now, in the world that we're living in today, have you ever heard of better words that people really want? I don't teach how to, you know, the strategies. Success is 95% mindset. The strategies are only 5% of anyone's success. And this is why it feels hard because we're all trying to get 100% results by working at 5%. What Bob taught me was how to tap into this 95%, how to leverage the source of power that was already within me. I didn't know that. But that night when I made the decision, I wrote, it's been a crazy weekend. By the way, I write to myself, and this is a good learning. It's been a crazy weekend. I'm overwhelmed for so many things. I have the love of somebody, but I still can't even understand why. But I've decided I deserve more. I've decided I'm going to act on my dreams. I believe in myself. Seek and ye shall find. Ask and it will be given. Knock and the door will be opened onto you. That was the very little letter that I wrote myself after I made that decision. And you can hear in my words, that was what I called a crazy weekend, making a decision. And you know what that decision was? That I'm going to quit nursing. I'm going to go after my goal. That's why it said, I've got a love for somebody. And this was talking about Lindsay. And I don't even understand why. Like even back then in 2016 in July, this was the 3rd of July. I'm sitting going, I don't know why anybody loves me, but you know what? I'm going to decide I'm going to go for it. Now, when I started to listen to Bob and started to come across this material, I knew this was for me. I can't even tell you how I knew. I just knew I felt it. And I made a decision. I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to quit nursing. I'm going to go work with Bob Proctor. Now, when you're from where I'm from, and I know everyone says that, and you tell people that you're working with, that you're going to quit a professional career. You're going to ditch the pension. You're going to ditch security, or so we feel. Security is not in a job. That's an inside job. So glad Bob taught me that. I decided I'm going to leave all of that. I'm going to go off into the sunset. I'm going to create my dream life. I'm going to love me. I'm going to earn money, absolutely. I'm going to serve people and waking them up all over the world. I'm going to build my dream home. I'm going to travel the world. I'm going to do it all. People thought I was nuts. Absolutely crazy. And I was the mental health nurse. I was the one that spent 10 years in that field. And here I'm saying, I'm away, guys. I'm going to go do me. And that was a, a, that was an interesting time. I didn't tell my parents because they would have absolutely intervention. You need locked up. I didn't tell them for nearly 68 months. 
I took a calendar in my wall, I closed my eyes, put my finger on the calendar, and it landed on the 11th of November. And that was the day I decided to hand in my notice with no idea, no plan. I wanted to work with Bob. I knew I had to invest in myself. So I didn't have any money at £4.20. Now, most people would go, okay, well, you know, I don't have the money. Maybe one day. No. I was really committed when I made that decision. I was really aware that if I don't change something, nothing's going to change. I didn't even have to understand the mind and results to know that. I see it. Every month was the same. Every year was the same. Yet I'm still growing because we can't not grow every day you're growing. But what I realized was I wasn't growing by design. I was growing by default. I was just, you know, if it was a good day, it was a good day. If it was a bad day, it was a bad day. If somebody annoyed me, it was their fault. You know, that was just life for me. You would talk with other people about other people. None of my friends had goals. Like, it was just normal life. And then I realized, this can't be it. So I thought, no, I have to learn from Bob. I, I didn't, I mean, yes, I said I want to earn millions, but I mean, really deep down in my heart, I was like, if I could just replace the wage of nursing, I'm good. That was my first thought. I thought, well, Bob has, is the best in the world. He, he's been the leader, without a doubt, of the personal development. There's nobody as good as Bob Proctor. There never will be. I don't want to be like Bob Proctor. I can only be me. But I knew He's the person. I got to go to the best. I go to the person that is demonstrated by results. I don't want a motivational speaker. I don't want just a program. I want, I don't even know what I want. I just want something of what he has. And if I could have a slither of that, my life would be good. And I decided, okay. Bob said in his YouTube clips, if you make a decision on something that you want, the money will come. And that sounded absolutely ridiculous to me. What do you mean the money will come? Does it just float out of the air? My mom and dad said it doesn't grow in trees. In fact, money's the root of all evil. No, the love of money is. You want to love people and use money, not the other way around. So I, I made the decision and I looked around and I went, right, I've quit my job. I need to start this. I know what I'll do. I'm going to sell my car. Now, you've probably heard Bob talk about this story. Kim Calvert sold her car to get into this program. And yeah, I did. I sold my car because I knew been selling my car whilst I only got like £4,000 to my name. Should, in my logical mind, I should have been going, see if that for next month's mortgage. You've just quit your job, so you're going to need something to tie you over. That was the logical way to think. But Bob said, think logically. You see, Bob always says, do exactly what I tell you to do. I did exactly what Bob told me to do in every situation. So I sold the car. I took the money and I thought, OK, here is money. I can either put it into this pot, which is a bill and I have to pay it, or I can invest it in me. And if I invest it in me, I'm going to get a greater return because I can then learn how to create and earn money. I was never taught how to earn money. I probably would guess you've never been taught how to earn money. Well, we're going to talk about money on day four, because that's a whole subject of itself. For me, I made the decision. I burnt the boats. If you've read Think and Grow Rich, of course, Napoleon Hill's book that changed Bob's life, it talks about burn the boats. So there's no way for a retreat. That's when you know you've made a decision. And I've led with that from day one right through. So when I really decided, I started to work with Bob, that was, as I say, seven years ago. The biggest shift as part of the self-shift was as soon as I had decided I'm going to invest in me, I'm going to learn from the best in the world. The next thing I found out, Kim, you can go to Canada in nine weeks and you can meet Bob. And I went, oh my goodness, that's, yes, I want that. 
but I just sold my car and gave you all the money and I got nothing. <laughs> That's what was going through my mind. So I knew I had six weeks and I had to create an idea that I could implement and turn into an income because I was getting on a plane and I was going to Canada. This was my opportunity to meet Bob, to see Bob, and I just had to go. Those weeks went past, I came up with ideas. I actually used to make little protein bars, I used to sell them in gyms. And uh, in fact, I have a picture here I can show you um, just so that you've got some context for this. This is what Kim looked like uh, more at the start of uh, when things were happening. So here I am, okay? This is Kim, unfortunately, seven years ago in my hoodie with my homemade protein bars, selling them in gyms. Bob always said, you have something already. What do you have that other people would want? I had no other option. I had to start immediately. This on the right hand side, <laughs> unfortunately, is a picture of me and my first day going to training with Bob. I made just enough money to get me on that flight to Canada. I got the bus up from Belfast. I got on my flight. I went to Canada and I was terrified. Now, when I went in this first day of training, I didn't know what to expect. I was so beating myself up because I thought, oh, these are proper business people or, you know, they're all going to look at me and think I'm weird. She's a funny haircut and she's not very tall. And what age is she? <laughs> that was what was going through my mind. In fact, I kept my head down the whole time. Bob always talks about how when he looked at me, he thought, well, she's not going to do much. But then something happened in that first seminar. Something profound that I don't think I'll ever forget. Bob said one quote. He said, if I want to be free, then I've got to be me. Not the me that you think I should be, not the me my parents, co-workers think I should be, but if I want to be free, I've got to be me. So I better know who me is. That sunk in my heart that day. I can tell you exactly where I was sitting, what I was wearing. Bob was talking. I was just like, and he said that, and my heart felt it. If I want to be free, I've got to be me, so I better know who me was. I had no idea who I was. I had no idea who Kim Calvert was. And that scared me. And I want you today to ask yourself, who am I? If you take off the labels, that instantly restrict you. If you take off your name, you're not Kim. You're not a nurse. You're not a business owner. You're not a wife, a parent. If you take out all of the labels that you use every day and you just sit back and ask yourself, who am I? What comes up for you? Do you know? Like that was the biggest shift that I ever experienced. I didn't know who I was. Now, why do I say that was the biggest shift? Because it sounds like a pretty sad situation. You don't know who you are. I, yes, I was lost. I was scared. But I realized I wasn't being me. And I didn't even know who me was. So that must mean I wasn't really being the true authentic me because how can you be something that you're not consciously aware that you are? So I realized from day one, I need to figure out who I am. Now that brings me on to awareness. You've probably heard this word, awareness. I would say it's the number one key thing that everyone's got to understand before you start looking at results and all of that kind of stuff. It's a topic that not many people talk about. And there's a reason for that. Either one, they're uncomfortable with it. Two, they don't understand it. Or three, we're worried about what other people will think about us when we talk about it. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about you being a spiritual being living in a physical body. That's who you are. You are a spiritual being living in a physical body. 
Like you look at me, I'm wearing a white shirt. I've got a hand, I've got a head, but that's not who Kim is. This is a physical expression of an energy, which is part of my soul or my spirit. You have this presence within you. I believe absolutely wholeheartedly in my heart, whether you don't believe in any of this, whether you are in the depths of depression, whether life is just in the worst place, I believe that everybody knows and feels a presence within themselves. Do you feel a presence within yourself? Now, the difficulty is we don't understand that. And when we don't understand something, well, then it confuses us. And we usually think, no, oh, that's, we don't go near there. Don't talk about that, Kim. You know, every time I start one of these and I'm talking to you guys and I've maybe never met you. Yeah, I go straight into the deep end. Who are you? Set yourself free. It's not who you think you are that holds you back. It's who you think you're not. Yeah, I go right there because it's the absolute fundamental 100% most important thing that you realize that you have an infinite source within you. You do. Now, I don't expect you to just go, oh, well, that's what Kim says, so we'll take it from that. No, I want you to study it. I want you to study yourself. I want you to study the mind. Each day as we go through here, I'm going to break it down piece by piece, but the first thing you've got to ask yourself is, who am I? You've got to start to realize that you are an energy, you have a spirit. You live in this physical body and you live in a physical world. You've got, you know, physical things around you. This is physical, this is physical. But before anything becomes anything, before this pen, this is a bob pen. Well, before this pen could ever be a bob pen, number one, somebody had to think about creating a pen. There had to be an idea. The thought preambles everything. And then Bob one day just decided, and he was very creative, I must say, Bob's pen. Now, this could not be here if the idea didn't come first. And then we've got to ask ourselves, well, what is an idea? What is a thought? Thought is energy. I didn't know any of this. Bob started to tell me, Kim, you got to become consciously aware of who you are, where you are, and where you're going. When I started to realize that actually I'm not what I think I am, I thought I wasn't good enough. I had these limiting self-image beliefs that I didn't deserve much. Yet what, I, what Bob was saying is, no, 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 Kim, you're perfect. In fact, I have my first journal when I went to Canada and met with Bob. And what I did as a student, and again, I think it's very important that I teach you this, I would make notes every day that I'd spent with him. So here's the first day of training. What did I learn? Today, I learned to be me. I learned that I am perfect, but that my thinking, my paradigm likes to tell me that I'm not. I also learned I need to grow and learn but that I also have so much in me that I haven't given myself credit for. I'm so happy and grateful that I am now Bob's inner circle. I'm so grateful that now other people are being nice to me. And I even put this little story, it made me laugh today. Someone opened a door for me today. That is so funny and strange. Now, I see when I read my own writing from all those years ago where I'm in my journal saying, someone opened a door for me. That's so strange. That might give you a bit of an insight into how much I didn't think I was even worthy of a door being opening. And yet I'm writing to myself in here going, this is possible. Second day of training. What did I learn today? Today I learned to move on. Leave the story and create a new story. This is exactly what I wrote. Live more out of the person I am and out of the goal. Step back and look at myself and see how others might see me. Would I be happy with me? Now, that's one question Bob asked me, and I, I get you to ask yourself this. If you were to step back, if you were to even record yourself or 
get into someone else's shoes and start to look at you. Would you like what you see? Do you treat people the way that you'd like to, to be treated? Are you living your life every day coming from a place of love? Or are you coming from a place of reacting to circumstances and conditions? You know, the first part of today was all about awareness. You becoming aware that you're not your labels, you're not your limiting beliefs, you're not your story. There is more to you. And whilst I'm never going to be able to just make that click for you in, you know, 90 minutes that we have together, it's important that at least you hear it. Because what I noticed about myself as I studied these books, Bob, I only seen Bob that one time. And I accepted the idea. I said, what did I learn today? I learned today that I'm perfect. There's perfection within me. My problem is I've picked up these limiting thoughts and beliefs along my path. And now I live through them. I'm bringing things that happened in old relationships into new relationships. Same problems, different body. Has that ever happened to you? I'm bringing the same problems into different areas of my life. How you do one thing is how you do everything. I had no idea. And it said, I wanted to leave the story and create a new one. One of the big shifts that helped me tap into the true source of who I am. And by the way, this is not, um, oh, I love myself now. No, it's actually realizing that there is a higher power. Some call it God. Some call it source. Some call it energy. Some call it the universe. I don't believe we should put a label on it. You call it, believe it, whatever you want to believe. Personally, I do believe in God. That's how I call it. But you don't have to. All science, all theology, scientists call it energy. Theologians call it God. We all know there's a higher power at play. What makes the grass grow? What makes the sun come up? What is it that's making the ocean go in and out? What is it that's allowing you to breathe right now? Like there's a part inside of you that is so powerful, that is so infinite. And when you start to realize that we live on these three different levels, we are a spiritual being. We have a mindset and we live in a physical world and we live in a physical body. They are the three levels. Do you know most people are working at the physical? Okay, I'm going to do more. I'm going to do more. I'm going to work harder. That's working at the lowest level, which is the physical. Bob got me to realize, Kim, there's this other invisible side of you. There's this other invisible side of life. We can't see it. We can't taste it. We can't touch it. We can't smell it. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Now think about this. Think about love. Maybe a love that you have for a person, a pet, anything. Think about that love right now. Can you see it? Can you smell it? Can you taste it? Can you touch it? No. But you believe in it. Now you can kiss your partner. You can cuddle your little dog. You can smell roses. But that's the expression of the love. The actual energy, love is the most important thing. Love to me is level of vibrational energy. Now, I'm not going to get into vibrations today. That will come up through the rest of this week. But I'm asking you to realize with before you start to think about improving your finances, before you start to think about starting a business or any of that stuff, you must come back to love. And I think it starts with you, not others. You got to work on loving yourself. Now you got to work on it. In the beginning, I don't expect you to love you. I didn't love me in the beginning. I'm writing this stuff, wanting to believe it, but I didn't really believe it yet. I'm just writing it going, I'm going to do this. I'm going to create a new story. Would I like me would i be happy with me that was a question i asked and it's got to be the question that you ask we've got to take responsibility i've talked about awareness okay there's this invisible side of life these three levels the invisible side 
you've got a mindset and then you got the physical side and it's visible like I can see you know if I think about it, I'm going to tell you this story during the week here's a little acorn seed how on earth does an oak tree come from that that's day five I can't see an oak tree in this and yet one grows from it you can't see the fear that you've experienced in the last wee while, but you believe in it. So all I'm asking you to do is to have an open mind and realize if you need to see something to believe it, that's no belief. There's an invisible higher side of your personality. There's a part in you that is wanting to express itself, be a fuller, expansive expression of itself. There is, there's a part of you that wants more. And sometimes you don't, you feel bad about wanting more, but it's in there. You don't go to the gym and want to, to uh, lift with less weight. You don't go and put on your beauty products so that you look less radiant. Every single thing that we do as human beings is for expansion it's for improvement it is the essence of who we are it is built in our dna it is that's it you can't help but wanting more but what happens is then we live in a society that says you shouldn't want more settle for what you have and then this causes this internal conflict i want more but i shouldn't have more i would like more money but i didn't say that out loud you know, we do that. I'd love to go on those fancy holidays. Oh, but I don't want my family to know because they only get to go away once a year. Oh, I would love that brand new car, but what will the neighbors think? There are so many things that we're in conflict with. And we've got to be aware that there's this higher side, that when we learn how to use our mindset, when we learn how to connect and tune into this power that we have, then we can start to move it into physical results. Now, again, if you don't believe me, ask any top performer in the world, any sports performer, any artist. They all say there's just this thing. There's just this energy. And they've been able to line up with it. The best way I can explain plugging into the source of all supply is like you having a Hoover or a vacuum cleaner and you've got it plugged into the wall and you're trying to hoover the floor but you haven't switched it on so many in fact 97 percent of the population are plugged in but we're not turned on in fact you can never be unplugged you you are never separate from this better part of you from this power that is always looking after you but the only thing that separates us is us thinking we're negative. We're not good enough. So the second point was responsibility. And I've already mentioned it. I had to firstly become aware of who I am. Then I needed to become aware of where I am. I had to take responsibility that my results in life, these physical results were actually an expression of my thinking. Bob Proctor woke me up to realize, Kim, your thoughts become your reality. Thoughts turn into things every time with every person everywhere. And just think about it. Look around you, what you have in your home. It's only there because you first thought you wanted it. All greatest achievements have been done by people who think a little bit differently. The Wright brothers in flight. Ed Hillary going up to the top of the mountain. We have all of these examples, and yet the problem is we all think, well, they can do it and I can't. Well, that's where Bob was different. And that's where I'm different in telling you, just like he said, what is it that you really want? What are the reasons you think you can't have it? And then if we just let those go, we can go straight in that direction. But you've got to first take responsibility. We, we, one of the biggest things I had to do once I realized this was I had to let go of blame. 
of victim, of pointing. It's it's my job. It's the government. It's that partner. It's that. It's my parents. It's all these things. Or it couldn't be me. Do you know how many people go around talking about what other people have done and they never stop to think, what's the common denominator? And the common denominator is you, is me, and is how we think. Your thoughts create your reality. We think, we get emotional, and then we start to attract everything to us that's in harmony with it. Now, I'm going to break that down in much more detail over the rest of the next four days that are to come. But the key today is to actually ask yourself, what are my results today? As you start out on these five days with me, just like I had to, this is what shifted me to be able to create a life of freedom. I had to first go, okay, wow, I'm not just Kim. I'm actually this infinite source of potential energy. I don't believe that. I'm not really sure how to tap into it, but it is true and it is there. So I had to become aware of that first. I had to become aware that there's a process to how everything is created in this universe. And there is a process. Then I had to become aware I have a mindset that allows me to use the process to create anything I want. Now, I thought that was crazy in the beginning, but I love the idea of it. I didn't reject the idea. And I think that's the key. Bob says, if you can tell me what you want, I'll show you how to get it. So I went, okay, sit down because I got a list. And I went for it. Oh, I'd love to drive my dream car. I'd love to build my dream home. Oh, I'd love to be the number one for you, Bob. Oh, I'd love to be speaking on stage. Oh, I'd love, love, I had all these things. And it felt so good to finally be in an environment where it was okay to talk about those things. But in order to get those things, because I have no doubt so many of you here today are going, yep, I'd have that, yeah, I'd like that. It's easy to know what you want. And some of you may not know what you want, but actually that's not the important thing. The number one thing is where are you now? And why that's important is because when you look at your results today, if you sit down today and honestly go, okay, what is my health like? What is my relationships like? Whether it's with the kids, whether it's with your partner, whether it's with coworkers, what is the quality of those relationships? How do I spend my time? Do I have time? How do I perform in my business, whether you're in sales, whether you're in a business, whether you're an employee? How's your performance? What, what's your general lifestyle like? How much money do you earn? Now, if you just even pick that one and go, this is how much I earn. So I was earning 35,000 a year. I thought, well, your work pays you and nobody's, you know, Bob said, oh, you can earn 35,000 a month. I laughed in Bob's face and went, no, wise up. And you don't say that to Bob, but I did. And I said, that's not possible. Like what? The nursing's not going to pay me 35,000 a month. And he said, that's okay. Money comes through a business. And I went, say that again. And he says, you can create whatever you want to earn. But you've got to come up with the ideas. You work for satisfaction. You give service to earn money. And this all started to make more sense for me. Now, I'm going to go into that much deeper as we go forward. But I want you today to look at your results and then ask yourself, whatever you're earning a month, whatever you're earning a year, do you honestly believe you're capable of more? Now, really ask, be honest. If you don't think it, well, that's a different conversation. Hopefully you will by the end of this week. But I would absolutely say inside you, you're going, yes. Now, as soon as we think about earning more, we start to then worry about, well, I don't have more time to do more. And this is why I told you about those three levels of awareness. We are working down here on the physical. Do more, do more, do more, do more. The key is to be more. The key is to hook up to that source of infinite supply by understanding the thinking process, and then everything's easy. Now, that will sound so aloof 
to most people if this is the first time you're hearing this information. But I can't lie. I can't change how it is. This is how it is. I'm living proof and product of it. I'm going to take you through all my journals, all of my goals, and I'm going to show you, look, this is when I thought it. This is when I wrote it. This is when I took action. This is how I maintained my attitude. This is how I achieved it. And I've done it over and over and over and over again. That's why I have so much faith in every cell of my body that you have the infinite power within you to create anything you want. The only last point that I'm going to share with you today in, in having that self shift was figuring out what I wanted. If you have you know, listen today and thought, okay, do you know what? I resonate with that. There is something in me that knows there's more. I don't fully get it, but I feel it. That's the key. Like you don't have to understand this like a scientist. I don't understand, you know, the workings of this computer, but I can switch it on. I can use it. I don't understand the workings of my car, but I can get in and I can drive and enjoy it. Don't think that you've got to understand this like a scientist today because you won't. All I'm asking you today is just be open minded enough to go beyond your own limitations and accept the idea that actually this could be possible for you. There, you know that there's a feeling inside of you and you felt it. That's all the proof that you need. You don't need to see it. You can feel it. Problem is we're, we've not been taught how to manage those feelings, that emotional side of us. Well, emotion is energy in motion. And you want to take that energy and you want to put it into a goal. And that's the last point I'm going to make today. Where are you going? If you just start to discover who you are, you're the highest form of creation. You've been given a mindset that you can create and do anything you want. Then the, then the next question has got to be, well, what do you want? Now, I think it's in this order that we've got to look at this. And I think you've got to have enough desire and want to want to figure out all the other stuff. Bob taught me the greatest thing in that everything should come from a place of love. You know, I think Bob taught me more about love than he did anything else because he was just a walking just filled with love. He always went above and beyond. He always, you know, would ring me up and just sing to me or, you know, ring up and want to speak to Lindsay because he loved Lindsay so much that he knew it would drive me nuts. Love is the most important thing. I had a love for someone in my life that made me have the courage to go, that's it. Change is inevitable, but personal growth is a choice. And I got a choice right now. Am I going to keep doing what I'm doing and get what I've always got? Or am I going to try something different? Am I going to be willing, still fearful, but am I still going to be willing to just be open to what somebody else is telling me that has proved it, that has demonstrated it, that has time tested it, that has shown me the scientific breakdown? Who am I to say it doesn't work? I know nothing, really. So I never allowed my ignorance to go, oh, that's a load of rubbish. Now, if you'd asked me 10 years ago, I probably would have. I'd be like, oh, it's all woohoo. If you tell my parents, they still think it's a bit woohoo. But they can't deny the results. They can't deny that I'm the happiest I've ever been. They can't deny that I feel fulfilled. They can't deny that I'm impacting people all over the world, wakening them up one thought at a time. And when I didn't see that for me, Bob seen it. Bob used to just, oh, it was like he was buried into my soul. He'd be like, I believe in you. Take my belief. Borrow it. Because Kim, you do have infinite within you. Everyone does. It's just not many people are willing to, to look. Not many people are willing to do the work because they've kind of settled for what is. And that's why Bob's number one question always was, what do you want? No matter any time I met him for lunch, any time that we were on a call, just how can I help you? How can I help you get closer to what you want? So today, you've got to ask yourself, what do you really want? 
If you're hearing this for the first time, then I just ask you to ask yourself, if I couldn't fail, if there were no limitations, what would I love for my life? How would I love to spend my days? Who do I want to spend them with? How would I love to contribute? How would I love to bring a smile to other people's faces, whether that's through your service, your business, your family, your giving? Like, it's not about getting in this world. I'm going to teach you more on goals uh, on the results day. But today, I just want you to start to think. Yes, I'm getting you to think about what you would love, but I want you to really think about how it would make you feel. I'd never set goals in my life before, before I met Bob. Never. And now I have every single goal card that I ever set from the first one to today's one. And every single one of these cards, Bob always said, decide what you want, lift your pen and write it down and go after it. That's what I did with these cards. My first goal in 2017. I'm so happy and grateful now that money comes to me in increasing quantities. I'm so grateful that I'm now in Bob's inner circle and I am now helping waking people up. I have now earned a hundred thousand and I'm traveling the world financially free and able to help my parents. That was my very first goal card. This was where I knew like a hundred thousand to me. Wow. That was like winning everything in this world. I had no concept of 100,000. If I had 100,000 now, I wouldn't be so happy. Well, that's not true. You want to be happy without the money, but you get my point. I had no idea if this was going to happen. I mean, of course, as soon as it happened, I earned my first 100,000 in a very short space of time, and I went traveling, financially free. And when I went traveling, I completely fell apart because what happened to me was I was only starting to change this self. I was only starting to open up and see myself as something more. And then I went traveling and it was the best time, but it stretched me because I was traveling. I was away from my business and I'd only started my business and I've never don't have a business background, never been in sales. I mean, I'm a nurse. That's it. So I was in panic mode. I can't go away and enjoy my life and run a business. So guess what happened? My business dried up. My tears did not. And I really struggled to enjoy my travels for a wee while. And then I got on a phone to Bob and he says, Kim, you don't have to think that when you go here, your business fails. What if you hold held the image in your mind that you can travel and thrive and I thought, huh, I wasn't thinking like that. And this is the key. We don't know how to think. Most people have never been taught how to think. But that's what Bob taught me to do. It's what I teach my clients to do and what I'm going to continue to help people with. Because when you can decide what you want, put it on a card, you can start to think like the person you want to become. I had to think like the person I wanted to become, even though I was still living in a very small house, somewhere I didn't want to be. Like I didn't live in this beautiful home that I've manifested, which I'll share with you. I lived in a pretty rough area. No garden, no grass, really small, tiny, tiny, tiny kitchen. And it was really not opulent in any shape or form. And there's me going around, I'm going to earn millions and I'm going to change the world by doing it, blah, 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 blah. And there was me. I'm driving my little tiny car, we see it, Leon. I'm living in this little tiny house, but I'm thinking big. I'm thinking from the goal. I'm thinking about what I really want. And I'm starting to realize that you will become the person you want to become once you accept that you're not the person that you think you are. I thought I wasn't good enough. I thought I was unlovable. I thought so many negative things that weren't true. And it was only until I started 
to really realize that these were stories in my mind. These were programmed stories that I realized my results right now, your results right now, when you do inventory, are the product of your previous thinking. All of our results in life come from us. They come from a part in you called the subconscious, which I'm going to break into tomorrow. And until we take responsibility for that, you'll continue to react to life. Things will happen and that's life. Things will happen. I do not teach people to live a life where it's just sunshine and rainbows. No, life happens. The difference is life's happening for me, not to me. And I'm able to see the good. Bob taught me how to change my thinking so that when something would happen, I wouldn't go, oh, I wouldn't react. When you react, you give your power away. When you stop and think and realize that you can choose, there's like a millisecond between you re reacting or responding. Bob said, Kim, you've got the power to choose. Do you want to react and give your power away? Or would you rather respond? Now, responding means, okay, it is what it is. Harvest the good, forgive the rest. This is the last point that I'm going to share with you today. Bob, it was a three-point thing. It is what it is. When something happens in your life, if you get upset about it and you react, you're giving it energy. And everything you give energy to must grow. That is the definition of energy. It's always for expansion and expression. Energy can't be created or destroyed. It just keeps creating more of itself. So if I react and I give off a negative energy, I'm going to create more of it. Whereas if I respond to something that's happened and things will happen, I keep my power. I don't explode. I sit and I think and I go, okay, well, what's good about this? Find the good, because if it's really bad, it must be really good. I'm going to go over the laws in day five, but that is such a great one. If you right now are sitting thinking, you don't understand, Kim. You don't understand what my life's like. You're right. I don't. But what I know is that if there are hard things going on in your life right now, it'll pass. This too shall pass. You have to realize that it is what it is. You can't change it. It either controls you or you control it. And you want to look for the good. If it's this hard, if it's this difficult, there has to be an easy way. There has to be a fun way. Because we live in a world of opposites. There's an up, there must be a down. Inside must be an outside. Off must be an on. These are the universal principles. These are the invisible side of life, the rules of life that we weren't taught in school. We weren't taught how to earn money. We weren't taught how to make decisions. We weren't taught the laws of success. We weren't taught about mindset. And yet this is exactly when you tap into it. You're not working on a doing. You're working from a being more, which automatically makes you do more automatically you don't have to force yourself you don't have to pull yourself to take action you just automatically do it just like sometimes we automatically do what we don't want to do we have a programming within us within our mindset and we live from that place and it's controlling 96 to 98 percent of everything we do so that's why today you want to look at your results they don't define you you think of me back then, I was broke. My results sucked. I had every reason why it shouldn't work for me. But I had to just kind of go, okay, well, I'm going to be responsible for my results. The more time I blame this or blame there, I'm giving negative energy to that. So that must expand. I decided, no, I'm going to respond. Yep, this is me. I'm broke. My it's all me. I take it on board. Let me fix it. That's where your power comes from. Responsibility. Take responsibility for your thoughts today. Take responsibility for your feelings today. And take responsibility for your actions. In this world that we live in, that is always changing and will always be changing, we can't control 
the economy. We can't control other people. We can't control the news. We can't control government. We can't control anything apart from our thinking. And whatever we think will create. Bob's greatest quote, if you can see it in your mind, you will hold it in your hand. That's the very logo of my company. That is the quote in a vibration. If you can see it in your mind, you will hold it in your hand. So whilst the results might be like this today, the next thing you want to do is where do I want to go? What would I love to achieve? Ken says, you know, just think in possibilities. Think beyond where you've thought before. Dare to write these things down. Like I remember this goal card. This was a really important one to me. It was about earning two million. And I'd never even earned a million. And I went to Bob and I just wanted to, you know, get the diamond pin and be the first to do it and be the first to earn a million. And when I went to see him, he took me, this is what met him in the art of gold creation in LA. And with this last story, we will end today. There I am sitting in LA, art of gold creation. I think it was 2018, 19. And Bob says, let's go for lunch. I thought, okay, let's go for lunch. Great. Let me be prepared. Always have your goal card. Know what you want. I'm in check, right? So I went to lunch. I had my goal card ready. It had the diamond pin and had a million. And I was just like, please sign this. This will this be so good. And I went to lunch. And of course, Bob being Bob wanted to just talk about me. Wanted to talk about life. Wanted to talk about love. Wanted to talk about all the things that I didn't think really mattered. I'm like, yeah, but like, let's talk about business and let's talk about the money. And he just kept going back to, what do you want? And I took out my gold card and I showed him it and I says, I'm going for the million. And he looked at it and he sat back as he did. Mm. He took out his pen out of his blazer and he said, okay, I'm going to sign this and I want you to sign it. Are you committed to it? And I'm like, yeah, I'm committed to it. Yep, yep, yep. And he said, okay. And then he changed the number. He made it 2 million. And I'm sitting there going, oh, okay. I mean, I had a million on it, but two is fine. I mean, I'll take two. And he did it on purpose because he knew I had two in me. He knew I had many more in me. He knew that by stretching me, and that's what a goal is for. It's to stretch you. He knew I would go after it and do whatever I would do. And I wrote checks about it. I have a check down here. This was my goal. And he signed it and I signed it. And we said, it is done. And of course, it was done. It's done every time. Every single goal card. They've all been ticked off because I followed the same process. So all you've got to ask yourself today is, what do you want? If you, if you could just grab a magic wand, take this, think of it, just pretend. You don't have to talk to anybody else about you attending it this week. If you want to share people, bring them in for sure. But this is about you. This is why I'm doing this, because I know there's somebody listening to me right now going, this is, I feel this, and I know you feel it, because I feel it. And all I did was I just set the limitations aside. I set the negative self-talk aside. I grabbed onto the belief of Bob with all that I had, and I went for it. And I did dare to dream, and people did think I was silly, and people did laugh at me, and people rolled their eyes and didn't believe in me, and the whole, I didn't have anybody really around me. But I had a goal, I had a burning desire, and I backed it with faith. And that's why this whole week has been planned out this way. I do things very differently to most people. But I know I'm on my path. I know that Bob is here with us today, working to and through me to get to you. Because you have a goal. You have a desire. And all you got to do today is just sit and ask yourself, what do you want? If you couldn't feel, what would you really desire? Think about that. Keep it to yourself. Bring it back over these next few days. Now, we have come to the end of this first session. And I suppose just to recap and bring it all in 
to a landing, what did we talk about? Awareness. You got to be aware of who you are, where you are, where you're going. Don't go past that. Don't try and skip. If you stick around with me this week, you're going to start, especially over the next few days, you're going to start to go ding, 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 ding. Like it's, I am very simple and I'm very straightforward and I call it how it is. But I know my stuff and I know that you're here for a reason. So today has been great. It's been the first start of it. My story, I will be continuing to tell you it throughout the week. I haven't even started to tell you all the manifestations. Of course, we're revealing two big goals this week. All right. I'm going to be sharing a personal goal, which is just going to be amazing. We're going to do that on uh, Wednesday night. And then Thursday night, I'm going to be back with you again twice on Thursday. Thursday night, I'm going to share with you a professional win and goal. And I started today by telling you about the first conversation with Bob. And we're going to end this week with the last conversation with Bob, because, you know, I might be sitting here telling you my story. This isn't about me. It's not about Bob either. When you really, and I think me and Bob had such a unique relationship, we see outside of ourselves. It's not about Kim Calvert. It's not about Bob Proctor. It's about you. And that's the best way we can pay tribute. So I'm really looking forward to the rest of this week of us being together. Bring your notepad, bring your pens, sit back, enjoy, share with people. But most importantly, just be open minded. Take the advice I'm taking you. If you want, you can also reject it and say, I'm full of rubbish. But when you see this week what I've done and how I've made it easy for you to also do it, I mean, there's no better place. So guys, thank you for being here for the first self shift. Check back at 4 p.m. Emma will be here with some of our clients, which is going to be incredible. Hear from other people firsthand. And then, of course, Bob himself will be sharing the Born Rich series tonight at 8 p.m. You will find it all here inside your own portal that we've created specifically for you. And uh, I look forward to being with you tomorrow. So have a great day. It has been my honor to be here. I will see you all very soon. Bye-bye.